Black Dahlia. That's a flower from before the war, right? It was still dark out when we first walked into the little bar just over Dragon Bridge itself. The bar had a sign over it, shaped like a small rocket ship, with the words Red Rocket Public House written on it. Vervain pushed the door open, and we walked into the dim building, finding a few dirty-looking tables and about ten ponies sitting at different ones. The bar on the back of the building was being managed by an old Pegasus stallion. His mane and beard were as white as snow. His red coat made the white of his mane and face look like it was glistening, or it could have just been greasy. It was hard to tell in the low light. Two younger mares were wandering around the room. One was a unicorn holding a tray of drinks on it in her magical grip. The other was a pegasus who had a tray balanced on her wings. As soon as the two of us walked in, most of the room stopped talking and looked over at us. The look they gave us made it seem like we'd just intruded on a secret meeting of some sort. Vervain looked around the room for a long moment, then said, Ah, oh, piss off, you drunkards! Then pushed further into the room. To my amazement, the ponies looked away, going back to whatever they were doing before. I followed her as she went up to the bartender. The Pegasus looked up at us with a grumpy look to him. Yeah, what do you want? And if you ask for something stupid like water, I'll kick you out of here quicker than you can blink. Ravane smiled. Ruffle, it's been too long. Glad to see you're still a grumpy old goat. He eyed her suspiciously. I knew that voice. But don't you look like the pony you should belong to. What'd you do to yourself, Ravane? Find yourself on the wrong side of some killing joke or something? It's a long story. Let's just say I'm trying to keep myself from being noticed. You know how it is with my brother and all, she said. I'm glad to still see you remember me, though. Known you for 42 years. Most of the time watching you make a fool of yourself and cartwheel when you were nothing but a wee thing. I may be old, but I ain't senile yet. How's your father? Haven't heard from him in a few months. Getting worried that he's back on the hard stuff again. He said, and then his voice was rough. Like some ponies scraping rocks against each other. But through his gruff tone, I could hear a bit of kindness in him. That was until he turned his head towards me, and a frown fell with his beard. And who in the goddess's rotten underpants are you? He asked. I'm no pony, just... I started to say, but Vervain cut me off. She's my daughter. Her name is Sparkle. And I'm here in town. Don't call me by my name. Call me Holly Petal, she said. The last thing I heard, you didn't and couldn't have children. Ollie, he said. Adopted, I said. She saved me ten years ago from some slavers. She's raised me ever since. He looked at the two of us, then shrugged. Any family of box tape or his kin or friends to this old drunk. Anyway, what are you doing in a place like this? Don't tell me, Holly. Stupid name, by the way. Don't tell me you came all the way out here to see me, because if you did, I'm going to call you a rotten little liar. It's been a long time since I saw you last. Why can't I come visit an old friend? She asked. Because you never come to see me just to catch up. You either want something or something bad's happened. I'm guessing the latter. Did box tape finally kick it? He asked. His tone of his voice didn't change even a bit as he asked if an old friend of his died. Vervain on the other hoof looked like Ruffle had just kicked her in the gut. She lowered her gaze, then said, A few weeks back, yes. He fell when Cartwheel did. But you're right. I didn't come here just to see you or tell you about my father. Figured as much. Also thought he must have passed after Cartwheel fell. Stubborn old bastard wouldn't have let his town die unless he went with it. You have my condolences, though. He was a good friend over the years. It's sad to hear he's gone. 
So out with it. I'm busy, and I'd rather spend my time working rather than shooting the breeze, Ruffle said. Do you still keep in contact with the ponies in the Stratus? She asked. Not officially, but if you're asking if I still help the Dashites find a new home like I used to when I was in Cartwheel, then yes. Are you looking for some pony? He asked. She shook her head. No, only need to get a message to one. Think you can help me with that? Do I look like the courier to you? He asked, making me jump as he said that. No. But I know that you're a pony who can get things done when asked, she replied. True, he said with a smile. Fine, yes, I might be able to get a message out for you. It depends upon who you're needing to get in contact with. A source told me you can get in contact with a pony named The Red, Vervain said. Ruffle scratched his beard for a moment, then said, that may be true. What do you need him for? Tell him the message is from me, and that we need the distraction from Fairy tomorrow night, she said. Yeah, no, I don't much like coded messages. Don't you trust me? He asked. That's not you I'm worried about. The message somehow finds its way into the hooves of Winter Frost or his sister. Vervain said. Ruffle made a farting sound with his mouth, followed by, Can't believe that hoof-rotten shite Twizzler managed to take power. But I get what you mean. Fine, I'll get the message to him. Nah, do you need anything else, or you gonna order a drink? Don't have time to drink, sorry, my friend. But maybe when I have more time in the future, I'll stop by and we can catch up, Vervain said. He let out a hefty laugh. If I'm still kicking, that is. Sure, we'll get proper pissed. Anyway, be safe out there. Holly, still hate that name. Rain pulled out a few hundred caps and set it on the bar. For the information and the trouble. He took them, another grin on his face as he went back to tending the bar. We turned to leave, but Ruffle said, Oh, yeah, also... Watch out for the rangers. They've been wandering closer to Dragon's Bridge as of late. Don't think you want to be walking into one of their patrols. Thank you, Ruffle, Ravane said as we headed out. Once we were back on the broken-up road, we started heading across towards a much nicer-looking building with the words, Miss Mapletree's Cafe. Compared to the Red Rocket Public House, this place was at least twice the size, the building looked in a lot better condition, and it had a large radio antenna sticking up from its roof. As we headed towards the door, I finally asked for Vane, Why do you need to get the message to this red dude, and how does he know fairy glitter? She chuckled a little. The red is fairy glitter's husband, so Solstice's father. When you were getting ready to leave, I used Solstice's communication device to talk to her mother. She told me that if we needed to change something in the plan to let certain ponies in Dragonbridge know and to send a message to the Red. Solstice didn't know her father helped Dashites until a few days ago, funnily enough. Anyway, one of the ponies I was told to look out for just happened to be Ruffle. Fairy Glitter thought we might be able to get in and out of the Palisade quickly, so she set a distraction to help us escape for tomorrow morning. I thought it'd be better to give us a little more time. So that's another reason you wanted to go see him, then? I asked. Part of the reason. Anyway, I think we should head inside. It's getting close to when we're meeting our contact, she said. Good idea, I said. Why does this building have a radio antenna on it? Vervain was already opening the door, but at my question, she looked back at me, then said... Because this is one of the locations that DJ 33 and a third LP does her broadcasts from. How do you know that? I asked. Because unlike you, I keep my radio on a lot while I'm traveling, and I heard a few of her broadcasts while I was coming here. From what I learned, 
She has four locations she changes between. No idea, though, why. Vane said as we headed into the door, and nearly slammed face first into another mare. Ray managed to turn aside, missing the mare by inches. I, however, was still a little slow with my reflexes on my new leg, and I ended up tripping, rolling, and slamming right into her, knocking her down. I shook myself and then got up quickly, putting a hoof out to help the mare up. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to run into you. The mare had a light green coat, a black and white mane, dark gray eyes. She started laughing from where she was lying on her back. She took my hoof as she kept on giggling, saying in a voice I recognized from the radio, I'm okay, honestly. I wasn't watching where I was going, myself. Hey, are you? I started to ask, but she cut me off. The radio host you and your friends were talking about? Yes, name's Alto, but every pony just seems to call me by my radio name, she said, using her magic to pick up a few papers she dropped. Did you just finish doing a broadcast? I asked, finding myself a little excited to meet a pony from the radio. Nah, I'll be doing one in a few minutes, though. Just need to run over to the Red Rocket and ask Ruffle something quick. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Aldo said with a smile. Sha- <clears throat> Sparkle. My mother and I were just coming over to meet a friend, though we didn't know we'd run into you here. I said, looking over at Vervain, who gave me a look that told me hurry up or shut up. Alto looked over at Vervain, then back to me. Sparkle, hmm? You don't look like a sparkle. Not very shiny or sparkly, if you will. Well, it's my name, I said, worried that she picked up on my slip of the tongue. Oh, well, it's not my place to judge what ponies want to be called now, is it? You'll have to excuse me. I like to consider myself a journalist, and knowing things is my kind of thing. I've got very good at seeing through lies over the years, and I can tell that whatever your name is, it isn't Sparkle, so I'm not going to push. Anyway, it was nice to meet you, Sparkle. If you hang out for a bit, be sure to catch my next broadcast. It's got some fun news about the courier. You might like it, Alto said. Then she went with a wave to head over to the Red Rocket. I waved my hoof back. She turned for a second and then said, uh, Nice to meet you, too. Her eyes looked to my left forehoof for a moment. Then she turned and went on. After a strange encounter, I looked back towards Vervain, who shrugged at me, saying, I think we should hope this meeting is quick. I really don't want to know what will happen if she figures out who you are. I shrugged back. The disguise should keep any pony from knowing who I am. Also, even if I wasn't disguised, I don't think she'd figure it out. Most ponies don't even know who I am when I'm wearing my duster. We headed towards an empty table in the back corner of the cafe, passing a few ponies who were eating pre-war food or freshly made dishes and drinking sparkle cola or some strange black liquid I've never seen before. As we sat, Ravane said, a pony like her, who loves to know things and report on them, picks up a few things that most ponies don't. She's also probably studied mentalist techniques to sharpen her perception skills. Didn't you see her glance at your Pippa? Yeah, but so what? It's not like I'm the only one who has anyone, has it? I said. A mare who looked to be around my age came over wearing an apron and a notepad held in her magic. She gave me a very pretty smile, then asked, can I get you two anything? Ravane looked over at her, saying, Two sparkle colas, and that's it for now. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And while you're here, can I interest you in Miss Mapletree's famous wasteland waffles? The mare asked. No, not now, please. Leave us alone. Ravane replied, giving the young mare a glare that could melt ice. She backed up, her smile all but forgotten. Yes, ma'am. I'll be right back with your drinks. When she was gone, I looked back at Vervain, saying, That was rude. You really shouldn't piss off the ponies who handle your food. Stardust says there's a good chance they'll spit in it. I don't feel like dealing with any pony right now, apart from the mare we came to meet. Plus, a spark of cola is a sealed bottle, she said with a sigh. Anyway, 
As I was saying before, yes, a few ponies in the wasteland have pip bucks, but they are very rare. Your pip buck is even rarer, seeing as there are only three of them, and each one looks different from the others. If this Alto is smart enough to pick up on every broadcast DJ Pony, or Mr. New Pegasus, or just intel and rumors that gets around, she might know that you have a silver pip buck with red accents. I look down on my Mark II and sighed. I guess you have a point, but it's not like I can do anything about it. I can't just hide under my barding. I tried that once, didn't work out so well. I know, Vervain said. And that's why I think, when we get where we're headed, you're going to have to take it off. You're joking, right? You have to be, because the last time I checked, my Mark II was the key to unlocking a very dangerous pre-war project. Keeping on my forelegs is the only way to keep it safe, I said. It's not the only way. I remember I studied that thing for a long time while I was in Stable 28 with Grimm. She paused with a look of pain coming over her for a moment before she took a deep breath and continued. There is another way to remove it, but at the same time, making sure that no other pony can use it. Okay, that's news to me, I said. Of course it is. I never told any pony apart from Grimm about this feature. Honestly, I'm surprised I even found it. It was so well hidden that I'm sure most ponies would have missed it. Anyway, the Mark II has another feature in it that can lock it down, so even if it's removed from the pony it belongs to, she said. So you mean there's a way that I can remove this thing? I asked, shaking the Mark II back and forth, and keep other ponies from getting the intel inside of it? Yes, she replied. Okay, so what happens if I get captured and Wolfsbane or another steals it anyway? I'm sure they'd find a way to get past the protection, I said. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but the Pip Bucks, and by extension the Mark IIs, are connected to you in more than one way. They can access your health, your inventory, and your saddlebags, and put the EFS and notifications into your vision, and more, right? Ravane asked. Well, yeah, but it's an extremely advanced piece of tech, so what? I replied. She sighed. That's because the Pip Bucks imprint a piece of your DNA into itself, so it can be accessed in different parts of your body. In essence, it's almost like a mechanical piece of your body while you're wearing it. But unlike a normal pip buck, the Mark II doesn't erase that DNA data unless it's told to. When you remove it, it still remembers who it belongs to. Now normally, if you just take it off the way you're supposed to, the Mark II will know it still belongs to you. But it also remains open to another user, she said. Okay, I think I'm following you so far, I said. She smiled at me, then kept going. I think Applebloom set it up this way, just in case one of her friends needed to use other Mark IIs, or maybe she was just testing some new experiment. The Mark II itself was created to test out new features she wanted to put onto the Delta model. Anyway, she must have known that she or one of her friends might need to remove their own Mark II, but also keep the entire thing locked down so that another pony couldn't just take it for themselves. So she had a feature inside the same system that kept the data in it hidden when it's set up for a new user like it was when you got it. If you turn this on before you take it off, then the Mark II will only remember it's only meant to be used on its last user. If another steals you, it will be just as hard to get into as it would be to hack into a system a Mark II has locked down, like Falling Shadows. My eyes lit up at that. So, in 200 years, no pony's been able to figure out how to unlock the system? That's right. I even tested it out with Grimm when we were still in the stable when it works. I couldn't even hack into it, and I know more about that thing than most, apart from maybe Nexus, she said with a small chuckle. I looked down at my Mark II again, saying, I'm still worried that removing it will be a bad idea. It's a risk we're going to have to take, because if you go into Steel Ranger territory with that on, it won't matter how much you change your look. Ponies will still know it's you, she said. I know, I know, but there's still a problem. I may know how to remove it, but I still don't have the master key, I said. She grinned and pulled a Pip Buck master key out of her bags. I know. That's why I made sure to get this from Grimm's things before I left. I felt my heart start to pound faster as I looked at the master key. Then I looked down at my Mark II. For over three months now, I'd never been able to take it off. It felt like part of me now. 
something I had come to rely on. When I first put it on, only because I wanted to see what one was like, I would have done anything to take it off again. Back then, it was just an odd-looking pit buck, something my overmare wanted and I would have let her have. I didn't know then that I had just changed the course of my life forever, just because I had let my curiosity get the better of me. Now, though, I know that I knew what I had. I knew the dangers this thing on my foreleg could pose to the wasteland. It was the key to falling shadows, and I was about to remove it, making it easier for Wolfsbane or Aquila to get their hooves on it. No matter what Ravane said, I know deep down that some pony would figure out a way to make it work for them. But I also know that no matter how hard I try, I can't do my mission with it on. So with a heavy heart, I held my foreleg out for Ravane. Let's just get this over with and quickly, I said. I can't do it for you. I'll talk you through the process for locking it down, Vane said. The mare came back with a spark of colas, making a quick retreat when Vervain gave her another fiery stare. Then she started to walk me through the process of securing the Mark II. It only took a few minutes, but by the time she, I was done, my brain hurt. I wasn't cut out to mess with this kind of stuff. Sure, I could hack into a terminal, but not like Vervain or Bite could. Tech wasn't my thing, but I managed to get it done. Once that was done, I went into the hidden area of the Mark II, the one I'd learned about a few weeks back and prompted the unlocking sequence. A new screen came up on the pit buck, then I was asked for a master key. I took the key from Bervain and pressed it into the back of the Mark II, and with that done, another prompt came up. Master key has been accepted for pit buck 3000 Mark II, SB. User, Shadowstar, please speak your passcode to finish the removal of the pit buck. I took a deep breath and whispered into the Mark II, Morningstar. The screen vanished and the Mark II, for the first time since I'd put it on, went blank. My EFS vanished, followed by a small click. I flipped the Mark II over and saw the latch had disappeared on me long ago. With a flick of my magic, I unlatched the Mark II and removed it from my forehoof. It fell to the table with a small thud, looking like nothing more than trash. I suddenly noticed how itchy my foreleg was and started to scratch it until my discomfort was satisfied. Ravane smiled, then took the master key back and used it to remove her own stable 28-issued pit buck. Good. Now that we're finished with that, we need to take another step to make sure it's not taken from us. Like what? I asked. She smiled wider. With a trick as old as time itself. The old fake-out trick. She pulled another pit buck from her saddlebags and showed it to me. It looked exactly like mine. Where did you get that? I asked. Little project I was working on. Figured that there might be a time when you have to give up your Mark II. So I took a normal 3000 and made it look like the Mark II you have. What you're going to do is take this one, and we I'll take the real one. If something happens to us while we're in the Steel Ranger's territory, they'll never think you'd give it to me. So, if they try to take it, put up a fight, but in the end, give them the fake. She said, reaching over and taking my pet buck, then giving me the fake. I watched it vanish into her saddlebags with a slight worry. Then I took one she'd given me and put it into my bags. I just hope this works. Me too. But if everything goes the way it should, it will be fine, Mervain said. Before I could ask her anything else, I heard the doors to the cafe open, followed by a filly's voice arguing with a stallion. I don't care what you say about it, Crimson Lance. And who said you could follow me all over town? I'm fine. I've been here tons of times. I looked back and saw a dark red unicorn with eyes almost as red as my own black freckles on his nose, an electric blue striped mane, and tail looking down at a filly who was as tall as me. The filly had a dark purple coat, yellow eyes, and a darker blue mane. As they walked in, he spoke with a kind yet stern voice, saying, Miss Delilah, you know that I'm supposed to keep you safe at all times, and your father would have me skinned alive if he knew that I left your side. It's bad enough you keep running off to this place as it is. I really don't care what my dad wants. He's too busy being a dick and telling every pony what to do to notice me wandering off. 
Plus, I like this town. The ponies here are nice, and Miss Maple makes the best food ever, she said as she started to look around the cafe. Plus, I came here to meet some friends, and you're going to scare them away. This place is full of former enclave. If they knew who you were, they'd kill us, he said. She started to giggle. The ponies don't here don't give a shit about who I am, Crimson. Usually there's a reason they're former enclave. So go away, please, so I can talk to my friends, she said as she spotted Vervain and I in the back, her eyes went wide. I can't leave you here, he said. She growled. Fine. Can you at least wait for me outside? Oh, and you're from here on out sworn to secrecy. If you tell anyone back home what I'm doing, I'll make you regret it. He sighed. I'll already be in trouble as it is for letting you go out. Again. So fine, if it keeps you happy, I swear to not say a word about what we're doing here today. She grinned. Good. You're probably going to regret it later, though. I already am, Crimson Lance said, turning and heading back out the door. As soon as he was gone, the filly headed straight for our table. She stopped at the end and grinned. How's it going, you two? Are you the ponies I was told here to meet? Ravine spoke up and said, Could be. Depends upon who you are. She rolled her eyes. Name's Black Delilah. And I hope that one of you is Shadow. I looked at Ravine, then back to Black Delilah. Um, that's me? How would you know my real name? I thought we were keeping our identity secret from this contact, just in case. She tilted her head at me, then started giggling as she pushed me further up the bench, taking a seat next to me. Cool. Nice to meet you, Shadow. Nice job with the disguise, by the way. Top-notch job to whoever did it to you. Though I'm a little surprised. I always figured the courier was a little older. You can't be any older than me. Vervain spoke up. Call her Sparkle, if you please. You can call me Holly Petal. You know that Holly doesn't have petals, right? Whatever. Fine. I'll call you Holly, then. But who are you, anyway? I was told that uh, Synth pretended to be a real pony, that the only one I'd be meeting here was with Sparkle Pants here, Black Delilah said, pointing a hoof at me, damn near poking me in the eye. She's a second mother to me. She used to be a Steel Ranger. She's coming with me, so I have backup if I need it, I said. Why do you need backup? You gave me and a couple other rangers who wanted to see Mr. Elderpants taken down a peg or two. It's going to be hard enough getting one of you into the palisade, let alone two, she said. Ravane rolled her eyes. And the city itself is huge. Elder Wolfsbane has at least 500 steel rangers, if not more. He won't notice one extra. Black Delilah, I'm not going without her, I said. Oh, please, call me Delilah, she said, waving a hoof around as she got close to me, saying quietly, I'm your biggest fan, by the way. Wait a sec, where's the silver pip buck you always have on? Safe, I said. I thought you couldn't take it off, she replied. I have my ways. Now, how do we know we can trust you? We were told that you'd help us get into the palisade, but why would one of Volsbane Rangers help me? I asked. Tyla looked a little shy as she looked down at her hooves. Then she finally spoke, saying, The Elder's lost his mind with hatred over everything that's happened the past few months. He lost the Mark II, he lost the tech from Stable 97, he lost his eye to his father, and to top it all off, you keep surviving everything he's thrown at you. He's not a good leader. But every pony's too scared to do anything to stop him. I need some pony like you to help us. I thought every pony in your branch of the Steel Rangers loved Wolfsbane, I said. She looked sad, then said, Most of us are scared of him, and Hacker, and every pony who's tried to stand up to either of them ends up dead or worse. I spent the past few months looking at every report the Steel Rangers have on you, listening to every broadcast the radio ponies have said about you, I know that you can do something to help us. 
Or at the very least, help me escape the rangers? Escape? Why do you need help with that? I mean, you're here in Dragonbridge right now. What's stopping you from just running off or staying here? Being a steel ranger doesn't mean you can't just leave. It, it's happened quite a lot over the years, Ravain said. Elder Wolfsbane would hunt me down and drag me back by my ears if I ran away. I can't get away with sneaking out every few days and coming to Dragonbridge, but it's easy to get here from the Applewood sign. It only takes an hour or so. Running, however, would be a betrayal to the Elder, if I was trying to. The only way I can manage that is if I was abducted or he thought I was dead, she said. Ravain looked a little confused by that, but she let it go, saying, We can't promise anything, Delilah, but we'll try. I know Wolfsbane well, and unless we make it look like you're dead, nothing will stop him from coming after you if you're that important to him. I'm not sure about Holly, but I'll do everything in my power to get you out if you want. I've lived a life similar to your own. Living in fear of your leader is no way for a young mare, I said, smiling at her. She looked more relaxed. Thank you. I have family in New Pegasus that I'm sure I can trust to take me in. So if you can get me back there, then I'll do whatever you need me to. So, what are you planning? We need to get our hooves on one of the Enclave airships or transports that I know Wolfsbane has, I said. Oh, Delilah said, looking a little disappointed. That might be harder than you think. The Elder keeps those within the Palisade. He only has two transports, four smaller ships called Turtles and some kind of warlike ship. I'll get you two into the Palisade. I'm going to have to really put on a good act to get past security. I was wondering about that. How can a young mare like yourself get us into the Applewood sign compound, let alone the Palisade? Vervain said. Delilah looked sheepishly around as she said, Well, let's just say that my father is high up in the ranks of the Steel Rangers in Los Alicorn. I'm also a junior knight as well. My plan is simple, really. I have documentation from a trusted friend of mine who has you listed as working on the far side of the compound, who are helping me with something. Seems like it would work. But would Wolfsbane know who's who in the compound? I asked. He laughed. Not a chance. It's Hacker that you have to worry about. Wolfsbane leaves most of the management of the Steel Rangers to her while he plans out his war. Wait a moment. Back up a bit. I said, shaking my hooves at her. What? War? Her eyes went big as if she'd just let something slip. Oh, right, I'm guessing you didn't know about that. You see, he's planning on using the Palisade to take out the Steel Rangers from the Hidden Sands, then New Pegasus right after. He wants to take the entire region for himself, putting the Steel Rangers over all the other factions there. He's going after the Hidden Sands? I asked in shock. I thought he was allied with them. I was under the same impression, Vervain said. I can't believe you two don't know this already. But I heard about you, Shadow, you're close to the new elder of the Hidden Sands. I <clears throat> wouldn't say that. He tried to kill me a week or so back. I used to be friends with Sapphire, but ever since she's taken over the Rangers there, she's kind of lost it, I said. Delilah looked thoughtful, then said, Wolf Spain is under the impression that you're working with them, but even if you're not, it doesn't matter. He wants Sapphire dead. So do I, I said angrily. She's not the pony I thought she was. Well, Wolfsbane cut all ties with them since Alpha Slice died. He blames you for her death, she said. I had nothing to do with it, I nearly yelled. I took in a breath, then said quieter. I had a lot of respect for Elder Alpha Slice. She helped me when I first came to the Wasteland, and because of her, I was able to set out on the path I am now. Delilah looked at me with an eyebrow raised. She wasn't anything close to good, Shadow. She was Wolfsbane puppet for years. She was the one who helped Crackerjack kill the last elder before her, her own father. She took power after he died and did everything she could and was told to by Wolfsbane. Who do you think told him where to find your old stable? She also sent a message to him as soon as you left Stable 9, told him you had one of the Mark IIs and was 
saving the one you got from Stable 9 for him, and she was getting ready to take one from Trotston. She was planning on killing you as soon as she was told she could, so she could take your mark too. Sapphire killed her before she could do most of that. She was put into power by the rest. I'm not sure why Sapphire wants you dead, but a few weeks back, she saved your life by killing her former elder. Then a light bulb lit up. The thing Sapphire said to me when I ran into her near New Pegasus before our fight and during, I did everything to help you. I wanted to help, but you've lost your mind. She put herself into danger again to save me. When she heard about what happened to me and I lost control of Quilla, any respect for me when the news got out that I destroyed Appleton and Mill City Tower was lost. <clears throat> from her point of view, I'd gone crazy and was using tech that Steel Rangers would normally have taken from other ponies to kill and destroy. I was doing the exact same thing that Steel Rangers sought to stop, using technology to be a monster. I looked over at Vervain. Sapphire thinks that I'm the bad pony here. She attacked me to save the new Pegasus area. And that still doesn't explain why she's militarizing the Hidden Sand Rangers, Vervain responded. I... It, it, it does, though. She believes in me, or used to, as a savior of sorts, or at least some pony that could help the new Pegasus. She thinks I'm crazy now or power-hungry, so she's trying to use what she has to help the Wasteland. So once she kills me, she won't have to watch the land she loves dies. I said. Dahlia spoke up. Makes sense. Sapphire always has been an outspoken against the older ways of the Steel Rangers. She's always been part of the faction that wants to use the tech to help the ponies in the Wasteland, not keep them hidden away. How do you know so much about all of this, if I may ask you? Vervain asked. That's my secret. If you help me get away, then I might tell you. Dahlia said. And you said you had family in New Pegasus, huh? Who are they? Vervain asked. Just one. An aunt who I thought was dead. When I get to New Pegasus, I was going to hire a griffin to help me find her. I'm sure she doesn't know anything about me, but I'm hoping she'll take me in. Dahlia answered. I glared over at Vervain, thinking, she has to talk about this right now, shaking my head. I looked back over to Dahlia and smiled. As luck would have it, my griffin friend leads the Shadow Talons. When we get back, I'll have her find a good griffin to help you. But for now, we need to get into the palisade. You mean Aura Blood Talon, right? Isn't she the griffin you're sleeping with? I asked. I face hoofed. How does a little filly from way out here know about that? She shrugged. Word gets around. Like I said, I know a lot thanks to my dad. Anyway, <clears throat> putting that aside from now too, I can have her help you find your aunt. I said. She beamed. Hassam, well then, should we head back to the rangers? Um, what about the buck who came here with you? Ravain asked. You mean Crimson Lance? He's one of the ponies who's on my side. The buck hates our elder almost as much as I do. Maybe more. He's a knight that's in charge of keeping an eye on me. He doesn't know who you are or everything that I'm doing, but I know he'll be on board. That also includes a scribe friend of mine back at the Palisade. She said, getting out of her seat, finally giving me some room. Ah, I wanted to hear DJ 33 and 3rd LP do a broadcast. I complained. Well, you can listen to it on the way then, Vervain said, getting up. That's not as cool as watching her do her broadcast, I said as I got up and followed her and Black Dahlia towards the door. Vervain went over to the small counter and dropped a few caps in front of the waitress. We walked out of the door and almost bumped right into Crimson Lance, who was pacing the deck. He looked up at Dahlia, then us, before saying, Miss Dahlia, are you finished with whatever you were doing? Yep, I'm ready to head back. Also, I want you to meet Sparkle and Holly. They'll be heading back with us, Dahlia said with a big smile. You realize that you can't just take two tramps back with you, right? Your father will be pissed if he finds out you invited outsiders into the camp. As he spoke, he kept looking at Vervain, his eyes narrowing as if he could see through her disguise. 
Vervain narrowed her eyes back, then said, I'll have you know that I'm a paladin, buddy, so I'd watch your tone with me. Magdalia looked back at Vervain, saying, You're a paladin? My contact didn't say anything about either of you being Steel Rangers. I mean, I know you're not, she said, looking at me with the last comment. What gives? Doesn't any pony give me any information? Ver... He started to say, his eyes going wide, but Vervain cut him off. You won't speak my real name here, Crimson Lance, or I'll feed your teeth. You follow? She said. But I was told that you died. How do you expect anybody not to see through that disguise of yours? He asked. Crimson Lance? How do you know her? Dahlia said, now looking between Vervain and Crimson. <clears throat> it's a long story, he said with a sigh. I think I have an idea about what's going on. Let's get out of this turd of a town, and we can talk on the way back to the compound. Sounds good to me, Ravane said, rolling her eyes. So we headed out of town as quick as we could, heading northwest towards the Applewood sign. As we took the broken-up road that headed up that way, and were a good distance from the town... Crimson finally started to talk. Black Dahlia, you're going to tell me what you're planning right now, or I'm bringing this to Alder Wolfsbane. You'll do no such thing, Crimson Lance, she yelled. If you do, I'll let it slip that Broteris, you, and the rest of your friends have been planning. He stopped dead in his tracks. You've been listening in on our conversations again. I told you to stop doing that. We could be killed if he found out. I'd hate to see what he'd do to you if he knew you had any part in our plans. Ravane broke into the conversation. I'm guessing this group of friends and you are planning to overthrow Wolfsbane, am I right? He glared over at her. You know what, Holly, or whatever the fake name you're trying to pass off, why should I tell you anything? You're closer to Wolfsbane than any pony here apart from Black Dahlia. So, I'm sorry, but I can't trust you or this filly you have with you. Black Dahlia looked confused at that, then said, Keep your big trap shut about my connections to the Elder, Crimson. Then she looked back at Vervain. How close are you to the Elder? None of your business, Dahlia. That's between Wolfsbane and I. I want to know what your connections are to him. The more you talk, the more I'm getting worried that I'm walking into a trap, and I don't like that kind of feeling. Wait a moment. You don't know who Black Dahlia is. How could you not? Crimson asked. I trailed behind the three of them, feeling a little bit of anger building up, as Vervain said. How could I know anything about her when I just met her an hour ago? Dahlia looked ready to explode again, so I finally got between all of them, yelling, Enough! When they all stopped their fighting and looked at me, I didn't care. None of them could understand my hatred for Wolfsbane. I immediately looked at Crimson Lance. First of all, I don't know if you or what your plans are for the Steel Rangers of Las Alicorn, but what I do know is that Wolfsbane is evil and deserves to be thrown off the top of the palisade, just like he did to his father. As for you, Black Dahlia... You better start talking and explaining more about your idea on how to get us into the palisade before I decide to kill both you and find my own way in. Crimson Lance looked at me like I'd just danced on his mother's grave. How dare you? Who the hell do you think you are? I didn't want to do this, but I knew I had to. I wasn't able to bring out all my weapons or my duster with me on this mission, but I did keep one. My favorite gun. I pulled Dreamwalker out of my saddlebags, pointed at him. I'm Shadowstar, the Courier, and if you talk to me again like that, I'm going to blow into a hole in your head. Mervain sighed. Now you've done it. Now he's going to try and attack us, and then we'll have to clean up the following mess. However, Crimson Lance didn't do a thing. Instead, he looked at Black Dahlia, asking, Dahlia? You really managed to find the courier. How'd you manage to do something the rest of us couldn't over the past week? She just shrugged. It wasn't me, 
just some synth finding me and telling me she wanted to weigh into the palisade. He began to laugh. Oh, my goddesses. And here I thought you'd picked up some random filly being protected by an old ranger. Good job, kid. Utterly confused, I was lost for words as Dahlia shrugged. I heard Bro Tartarus and you saying something about once about how much good she would do if she was able to at least get onto the palisade and take Spain down. So when the opportunity presented itself, I jumped at the chance. What's going on? I asked, putting Dreamwalker away. I'd like to know that too, Ravane said. He shook his head and said, You have my apologies. If you're here to take that dictator down for good, then I'll do whatever I can to help. You see, I'm part of the group of rangers who's been planning for years now to overthrow him. The problem is that Wolfsbane has too much sway over a good number of other steel rangers. So much so, that we've never been able to go after him. But from what I've heard about you, Courier, I know that you can be the tool that we need to finish him off for good. That is, if Holly is truly against him now. I put up a hoof. Alright, listen, dude. I'm not going to the Palisade to take down Wolfsbane. I'd love to, trust me on that. But I've got a different mission, one that's more important than revenge. I wasn't there when the Palisade destroyed Cartwheel or when you almost killed the Elder. But I heard what happened. Why wouldn't you want him dead? Crimson asked. She just said she would love to kill him, but we have a more important mission, Ravane said. We need to get our hooves on an enclave transport. And from the intel we have, Wolfsbane has one. Why do you need an enclave transport? It's not like either one of you can fly them. Also, wouldn't it be killing two birds with one stone going after him? Crimson asked. As we talked, I could see a sadness coming over Black Talalia. But I answered Crimson, saying, If I get the chance, I'll kill him, but I'd rather not risk it. My father needs me to get to Stratus. That's why we need the transport. Don't worry about how we're going to fly it. I have that covered. I thought you were all about taking down ponies like Wolfsbane, though. You do know what he's planning on taking over the Marabe, right? Crimson asked. I do, but I'll find a way to stop him. Right now, my family comes first, I said. Before we could say more, Ravane asked. Are you all right, Dahlia? I'm fine. Why wouldn't I be? She said, wiping away a tear, turning away. I just don't like all the talk about killing the Elder. I hate the guy, but I'm not sure I want him dead. Just not in power anymore. Something else to have clicked in Vervain's head, because she sighed, saying, oh, Please don't tell me what I'm thinking is true. What do you mean? I asked. Black Dahlia. That's a flower from before the war, right? She asked the filly. Yeah, but how do you know that? She asked. She sighed again. Because Wolfsbane and me are both named after pre-war flowers, just like how our mother has the name of a pre-war tree. You're his daughter, aren't you? My jaw dropped open as I looked at the filly. It was then that I could see some of her vein in her. A little in her grandmother and Wolfsbane. If this is a trap, I don't care if you're a filly or not. I will vaporize you. Unless you prefer to be turned into a puddle of glowing grease snot, then I got a scenario covered too. It's not a trap. And what do you mean, you and my dad? Are you... Vervain? She asked. I'm surprised you know my name. I figured my brother wouldn't have told you anything about me. Ravain said with a sigh. I'm guessing I'm the family you said you had in New Pegasus. She nodded. I know about you because my dad used to talk about you a lot when he thought you were dead. He said you two used to fight a lot, or that you were one of the best rangers he'd ever met. He said you were a lot like my grandmother before she died. I wouldn't say I'm like White Oak. Oh, and she's not dead. But that's a topic for another time. What I want to know is... How I don't know anything about you. What are you, like, 14? 15, maybe? I'll have the all 
Scorn Rangers branch a little over 12 years ago, and I don't remember my brother having a foal. He didn't even marry Hacker until 10 or so years ago, Vervain said. The scowl that came over Black Dahlia's face was priceless. I almost had to hold back a small snicker at the offended look she gave Vervain. Then she said, Hackers, not my mom. I was born almost 16 years ago, and my mom was a paladin. Her name was Ruby. Vervain looked at Dahlia with a shock. Star Paladin Ruby. The same Steel Ranger who helped fight off the invasion of the Enclave 20 years ago. Who, on her own, took down one of their raptors. Crimson Lance looked up for Dahlia, saying, The very same. She was my cousin and a good friend. That's why I keep a close eye on Miss Dahlia. After her death, I took it upon myself to make sure nothing bad would ever happen to her daughter. My dad took me when my mom died. Had a unicorn check to make sure I was his daughter at first. But once he found out that I was, he made sure to keep me around him at all times, Dahlia said sadly. I've been trying to get away from him in the past few years. Who is Star Paladin Ruby? I asked. Ravain looked over at me, sadly. Sapphire's older sister. She left for Los Alicorn when Sapphire was still young and worked her way up the ranks. She was the next in line to take over as elder until her death twelve years ago. My brother was only a paladin himself back then, but one of the strongest. With Ruby's death, there were no star paladins to take over as elder when the other one was brought up on charges. So Wolfsbane took power for himself and became the new elder. Wait a minute, I said as I put Dreamwalker away again. I sat down on my haunches, tapping a hoof on my head, trying to process everything. So, you mean that not only is Dahlia related to your family, who's held a lot of power in both New Pegasus and Los Alicorn, but she's also the niece of the new elder of New Pegasus, and the great-granddaughter of one of the biggest known elders from New Pegasus too? I asked in shock. That about sums it up. I'm guessing that's why Wolfsbane wants you around, Vervain said. In a way, yeah. But really, I just think he wants to try and build me up to be like him. He's always going on about how he's going to be a better father than his was. He lets me get away with a lot, but at the same time, he won't really let me do what I want with my life, she said. And what is it that you want to do? I asked, feeling sorry for her. I'm not sure yet, but... I know I don't want to be a Steel Ranger. I don't agree with their way of life. They don't do anything to help the Wasteland or the ponies who live in it. They hate Pegasi too, which I don't get because I've met a lot who are really nice, she said sadly. I want to see more of the Wasteland. Maybe help other ponies, you know? I smiled. I understand. I know you would, Dahlia said with a huge smile. You've done a lot of good since you came out of your stable. I want to do stuff like you. That made me frown. A lot of what you've heard about me is mostly hype. I've done a lot of bad things, too. I'm trying to fix a lot of things that either I've messed up or my distant relations have. You should try to find your own path in life and not follow in my horseshoes. She has a point, Dahlia, Crimson said. You can't keep idolizing some point like the Courier. You need to find your own path. I know, I know. You might have done a lot of bad things, but you can't push aside the good that you've done either. If I can learn from the mistakes you've made in the past, then maybe I can do better myself one day, she said with a smile. Ravain smiled at that. She's got a point, Shadow. I smiled, then rolled my eyes. Fine, but enough about all that. Now that we know who you are, why don't you tell us more about your plan to get us inside and show us that we can trust you? She just grinned and winked. You can trust me. I know my plan will go beautifully, because part of my special talent is helping myself or others blend in. She said as we started walking again, telling us about her plan.